Well, good morning, a very warm welcome to our worship from St Mary's Church here in Beverly today. It is good to be with you. From our church to your home, we worship together, the creator and sustainer of the universe, and we give thanks to God for his goodness. And so we begin with our opening music. God has chosen me, God has chosen me. In a moment of stillness, we come before God in confession. Lord God, we recognise that we've not always been salts and lights in our world. We've not always shone in the darkness. We've not always brought flavour to the world around us. We pray, Lord, for your forgiveness and renewal. We thank you for the opportunity to start each new day afresh. And we pray from your blessing on us as we are renewed and restored in the light of your forgiveness. Amen. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. God's wisdom revealed by the Spirit. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived. The things God has prepared for those who love him, these are the things God has revealed to us by his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. This is the word of the Lord. 
The New Testament reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Salt and Light You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfil them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, nor the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law, until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands, and teaches us that others accordingly, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Shall we pray? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If you were to describe yourself, I would be very surprised if you would use the descriptions that Jesus uses today. We wouldn't normally talk about ourselves as being salt and light. It seems like a strange analogy, a strange metaphor. And yet, if we think about it for just a second, it makes a lot of sense. Light dispels darkness. Light brings hope. Light helps us to see. Light exposes the truth. Light brings comfort and warmth and energy and life. And of course, salt brings flavour. It allows things to be tasted. It is identifiable in food. It, it brings healing and purity, so often used in medicine to combat infection. It preserves and protects foods. And so when Jesus describes us as salt and light, he is saying something about who we are as his disciples. The people of God who are so captivated by the person of Jesus Christ that we have chosen to follow him. The people of God who are so captivated by Jesus Christ that we live our lives differently. We live our lives as salts and lights in the world. And this passage, of course, follows on from the earlier section of the Sermon on the Mount, when we hear about what it means to be blessed, to be whole, to be made as we should be as human beings in Jesus Christ. When we hear about seeking for justice and, and mercy, when we hear about bringing forgiveness, when we hear about showing compassion, when we hear about resilience in the face of difficulty or persecution. Being salt and light almost summarises what we hear in the rest of the Sermon on the Mount. 
It says there is something uniquely different about being a follower of Jesus Christ, that we bring new perspectives to the world. We bring that light, that truth, that sense of comfort. We are called in our places of work, in our homes, in our communities, to show God's love, to be people of integrity, to be people who call out mistruth, who call out lies, people who speak for justice. We are called to be people who hold on to and share the teachings of Jesus Christ that transform the world around us. We are called to be the people who bring comfort in times of darkness. In very practical ways, being a Christian is about living out God's calling, about responding to the need around us, about being known as a Christian, so that people who spend time with us realise that there's something different, that there is a different way of living our lives. But it's not just about me and my family, but it is about loving our neighbours as ourselves. It is about worship. Is it, it is about understanding the world as being valued and cherished by God who made it and loves it and values it beyond measure. It is about thinking carefully about the way in which we use the resources God has given. Being salt and light is about being visible. There's no such thing as an invisible Christian. We are supposed to be noticed. Why? Because we follow Jesus Christ, because he is so captivating that through us, even through us and our fragility and weakness, others capture a sense of the person of Jesus. And so, brothers and sisters, today, I want you to remember how important it is to live lives that are visible, Christian lives that are discernible, so that our work colleagues, our friends, our neighbours know that we are Jesus Christ's followers because we show compassion to those in need, because we welcome the outsider, because we serve as well as being served, because we are people who are captivated by the word of God and share it in speech and in action. So you might not readily have identified yourself as being like light or salt. But today, perhaps you can. And perhaps we will. And in doing so, transformation will take place. Amen.
prayers. Let us quieten our minds and bring before the Lord the concerns of our hearts. Heavenly Father, God of restoration and justice, we pray for people of the world who are suffering, for the homeless, the hungry, and those who live in the desperation of war. Lord, please change their circumstances and bring them to the foot of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of renewal and of resurrection, guide the leaders of our nation and all nations to govern with a new perspective. Grant them fresh ideas and a kinder vision for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of revival, who lightens the darkness, stir up your church and give us a thirst for your word. Deepen our faith and enlighten our prayers to believe you for the impossible. Help us in your strength to be the salt and light wherever we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the rebuilding and transformation, grant us strength to pursue peace in all our relationships, families and neighbours and communities. Help our eyes to those who need help and keep us from giving up when it seems too difficult to help everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of refinement, our healer and redeemer, Fill us with your hope and peace in the world, in our church, in our everyday life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Father, we thank you you have prepared us for each of us, for more than we can ever hope, believe or imagine. No eye, no ear, no heart can conceive what you have prepared for those who love you. We praise you and offer you our prayers through your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, who brings, restores and renews us in his light, send you out to be salt and light in this world. Amen.